All right, full self drive, the 12.5.4. All right, full soft drive, V12.5.4.1. Yes, I do, comma, although I want to sell it. If you happen to know somebody who is in the market for a supercar, dot, 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 I'm pretty sure I'm only going to get myself killed if I hang on to it much longer. It tops 800 horsepower and it is a 10 second quarter mile. That is something that I made. I brought in a couple boxes of 3D printed stuff that I had around my house on Thursday and I walked around the entire offices and plants and let people pick out whatever they wanted to decorate their desks or homes. Although I honestly have no idea how that ended up on your desk. Um, I think one of the other Chinese girls actually picked that one. So I don't know if she got it to give to you or if she set it on her desk and forgot about it. Period. But... If you like that and you want me to print you one, just let me know what color.
And the sun is blinded. Oh, it's a beast. Dot, dot, dot. I took it to the fish concert in Chicago last year with actually my other MAGA friend, Aaron. It was right after I got the car and I took it on the a road trip to the Dayton fish shows and then to Chicago and after one of the shows I think last night of Chicago we tested out the top speed while playing Queen at about 3 a.m going back to his place on the highways dot 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 straight open road no traffic and perfect weather period 168 mph and my eyes were actually starting to get tunnel vis vision from the pressure of that speed so I had to back off but she held the road like it was riding on rails complete control and felt super solid it was definitely the fastest car I have driven in public who understand what it represents to their family and the future of their family again I go back to the dignity of hard work so let us be clear Donald Trump's insults to American workers is not exclusive to that video okay so that was just a moment. I'll have to send you a video link of a slower high speed run dot 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 only. One forty to one fifty MPH, but it's a daytime drive and you can see just how easy it is to go from 100 to 150 in a couple of seconds. purchases I've ever made because I rarely drive it period it's autopilot slash self-drive features are 
more of a stress indu inducing nightmare than a convenience feature. So I like driving the Tesla when I have to commute to Romulus because it makes that hellish drive super laid back. I can catch up on all of the latest news like what ridiculousness Trump is saying at his rallies and how he's canceling even the most softball of interviews. It's called union leaders quote dues sucking people. Okay? He said that he supports so-called right to work laws, quote, 100%, okay? He bragged and joked with a billionaire but- Hell yeah, dot, dot, dot. I heard Elon was trying to come up with something like that for the Roadster. mass firing striking workers and lowered labor standards and made it easier for companies that <coughs> break the laws to get federal contracts. Donald Trump encouraged automakers of Michigan so they could pay their workers less. Encouraged them to move so they could pay their workers less. Okay? And when the UAW went on strike, to demand the higher wages you deserve. Donald Trump went to a non-union shop and attacked the UAW. He said striking and collective bargaining don't make, and I'm gonna quote, a damn bit of difference. So here's the bottom line. Donald Trump's track record is a disaster for working people. And he is, I believe, an existential threat to America's labor movement. And everything he intends to do if he is reelected is also spelled out in that Project 2025. So to read it and to know it is to know he intends to launch a full-on attack on unions and the freedom to organize, okay? He will ban public sector unions, roll back workplace safety protections, read it when you have some time, Google it, everybody's watching, look, may, he will make it easier for for workers appoint a union buster to run the Department of Labor. Be sure of that. Be sure of that. So to all the friends here, I say what you already know. It's time to turn the page. If you ever want to take it for a spin sometime, just let me know. It's pretty much just sitting in my driveway with a cover on it until I get around to listing it online. Although I'm pretty sure I'm going to take a pretty massive hit and what I can get for it, but it's better than 
dumping a house payment into that thing every month if I'm not going to use it. Time out of your busy lives to be here this afternoon. And we are all here together because we know the stakes in this election are so high. We are all here together because we love our country. We love our country. And I do believe it is one of the highest forms of patriotism, the expression of the love of our country to fight for our ideals. And that's what this is about. This is not, at the end of the day, a fight against something. This is a fight for something. This is a fight for something. Including the fight to realize the promise of America. After all, that's what unions have always done. It's about understanding the promise of America, which has to include the promise that we should make to the workers of America. So we have 18 days to get this done. It's not a lot of time, okay? And we know there's gonna be a tight race this year, and we are the underdog. But make no mistake, we will win. We will win. We will win. Well, good thing this thing's got dash cam. Let's see if my car survives. 20 minutes in the Costco parking lot with this in the window. And when you know what you stand for, you know what to fight for. Make sure I got we dash cam. We stand for going. opportunity. We stand for dignity. And we stand for the future. And so I'll close by saying, and when we fight, we win. God bless you. God bless you. We've been watching Vice President Kamala Harris.
drive home.
Sorry, Melder. Hi, Alicia. Thank you so much. We'll be watching a lot of big news this weekend. I want to welcome everyone to The Beat. There is a lot happening on the campaign trail tonight. Harris continuing to do what Trump won't, capping her intense Fox interview with a new exchange with NBC today. Peter Alexander caught up with her at her rally. Uh, she's also going to sit for a more extensive interview with our colleague Al Sharpton this weekend. So we have more on that coming up. And Trump critic and Art of the Deal co-author Tony Schwartz is back. He's here tonight with a warning. And a reality show producer is making waves with his New York Times piece about Donald Trump's rerun problem from wrestling <coughs> to the WWE <coughs> and how it's all starting to fade at the very time that he needs more energy on the campaign trail. And as if that was not enough, I am thrilled to tell you we will also, by the end of the hour and the week, with Kenny G's beat debut, and he'll be joined tonight by Jason J, if you will, Jason Johnson. So that's by the end of the hour. While the top story in this busy campaign is Kamala Harris out here with these rallies you saw on MSNBC. She just concluded one moments ago. She's been in Michigan, and that's coming off those three Wisconsin rallies yesterday. She's hitting Trump with a criticism that he will certainly grasp, arguing, based on evidence in his own team's discussion this week, that he has fallen far below just, say, low energy. He's fallen below tired a state that many know from life or memes. Tired, just tired, who hasn't been there. But he's falling more into a position where he cannot even do his campaign job with a few weeks left. And so just like the internet meme you might know about how you can sometimes just feel unable to do something you left for tomorrow and then tomorrow arrives, shout out to Kirby. Again, we've all been there. Today, Kamala Harris is branding Donald Trump, 78, as frankly, just exhausted. So you saw some of the rally. We're going to show you right now some of these new remarks today, remixed with how Donald Trump's past political disses may be boomeranging, boomeranging on him in this home stretch. Trump in here reports that his team at least is saying he's suffering from exhaustion. And um, that's apparently the excuse for why he's not doing interviews. And you know what? I said it today. We cannot have a low energy individual as our president. We can. And he's the lowest energy individual I've ever seen. And of course, he's not doing the CNN town hall. Uh, he refuses to do another debate. And, you know, look, being president of the United States is probably one of the hardest jobs in the world. We told him, get off this stage, sleepy channel. Sleepy Joe, get off the damn stage. And so we really do need to ask if he's exhausted being on the campaign trail, um, is he fit to do the job? And I think that's a question that is an open-ended question that he needs to answer. Is he fit? He needs to answer. Has Donald Trump hit his low energy phase at the worst possible time? Is he tired? Tired and grumpy? Is he up to the job is what Harris is asking. Trump did a Fox appearance today. But he's also publicly pleading with the channel to just lose money, which corporations don't usually choose to do, and forfeit and reject any political ads against him. He's canceled interviews here from 60 Minutes to an NRA appearance. He's verged on what Politico calls a media blackout from anything other than just the most supportive cocoon like Fox. And it just clearly contrasts Kamala Harris's media blitz. She's traversing and reaching households that watch Fox or CNN or MSNBC or CBS, or any combination thereof, and also reaching people who get more info online, like these audiences for Howard Stern and The Breakfast Club and podcasts. Continuing with more discussions with journalists today, because as I just told you, Harris just spoke with NBC's Peter Alexander. That was by her rally before the one that just concluded that you might have seen some of. So we're actually going to show a little bit of this at some length, and you can see what she's doing that Trump is not. She's taking journalistic, challenging questions like pressing her on where she would actually specifically break with Biden's policies, which is a, a fair kind of real question for any candidate who's trying to distinguish what has been from what will be. She was asked about whether her campaign's lost any joy or momentum. So here is that exchange. At the convention, you cast yourself as a joyful warrior, but in recent rallies, you've increasingly attacked former President Trump as an unstable and unhinged. Is that an effective closing? Is that an effective closing argument? I think that one is not to the exclusion of the other. Uh, I have a great deal of optimism, as do the people who are here, 
about the future of our country. I think that's one of the things that is building the momentum that we have. People really do believe in what is the promise of America and our responsibility to fight for it. That is not in conflict with also being clear-eyed about the danger that Donald Trump poses based on the language that he has used and, and his admiration for dictators, his inability to really focus on the needs of the American people to go to work with people. These things are not in conflict. They all exist at the same time. The critics who say the joy is gone, you respond. Let me ask you about Joe Biden this week. Uh, President Biden said this week that every president has to cut their own path. What is one policy that you would have done differently over these last three and a half years than President Biden? I mean, to be very candid with you, you, you even including Mike Pence, um, vice presidents are not criminals. He's now giving you that green light with his comments that you can carve your own path. So now that you have this ability to say that to the I bring my own experiences and my own life experiences. Is there a career. policy that stands out to you in particular, either? Sure. I mean, my approach to what we need to do around Medicare covering home health care, born out of my experience of, of taking care of my mother. Um, my priority on housing, one, because I know what it means, affordable housing and the ability to buy a home. There is ticking off. There are some of the policies which she says go beyond what Biden has been doing. And that builds on the rebuttal she also presented on Fox for an audience that might hear them less, and certainly hear them at length and in context less often. She also accurately fact-checked Bayer, the interviewer, on the misleading way that they teed up a clip of Trump during that interview. And we have an update on this story today, and if you weren't watching Fox last night, you may not have seen it yet. What she did during the interview, along with sort of the fact-checking rebuttal around it and the public response, has drawn Fox's bear to now acknowledge he says he made a, quote, mistake in how that Trump footage was presented. Here's the original moment and his new remarks. Brett, I, I'm sorry, and with all due respect, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated when he's speaking about the American people, that's not what you just showed. I did make a mistake, and I want to say that I did make a mistake. When I called for a soundbite, I was expecting a, a piece of the enemy from oh, within liar. from Maria Bartiromo's interview. Nice try. As Bayer You've already the lied about saying that she was basically stuff. right to correct what the Trump quote was, but that he was expecting something different to play. So I have now broadcast that for you tonight for context so you, you can hear his side of the story, his rendition. Others remain skeptical. A Fox alum, Gretchen Carlson, posting online that the wrong clip can certainly run, but when that happens, hosts easily say, sorry, that was the wrong clip. She writes, he or his producers would have known it was the wrong one right then. Then there are many reports that are saying overall in this campaign home stretch, this was a net positive for Harris. She stood in the setting while Trump ducks journalistic interviews. And with so many eyes on what was a rare clash, her first Fox interview ever, we have more evidence pouring in. People have crunched numbers to show that Bayer interrupted Harris twice as much as he interrupted Trump in that interview. <laughs> that would not be literally balanced. It would be imbalanced if we're doing slogans. <laughs> now, this isn't the most important thing in the world, but it is a topic because it's a fact. then we can show you the ratings. Harris campaign posting online her Fox interview more than doubled Trump oh, in those ratings. So when it comes down to Trump and what he sells and his numbers and the ratings and how she's beating him, quote, even on Fox News, well, we have a great guest to get into it. Tony Schwartz, co-author of The Art of the Deal, depicted <coughs> his new Apprentice film. We're going to get into all of that. He's here. We're back in just 90 seconds. Hi, I'm Tally. 